from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering RSA Conference 2019. Brought to you by Forescout. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the RSA Conference in downtown San Francisco. It's crazy, 40,000 plus people. We'll get the number later today. We're in the Forescout booth for our first time. We're really excited to be here. And you know, part of the whole Forescout story is the convergence of IT and OT, operations technology. And those things are coming together, which is such a critical piece of smart things and smart cities and smart cars. We're excited to have our next guest, Elise Costante on. She is the OT technology and innovation lead at Forescout. Lisa, great to see you. Great to see you, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, so you've got a PhD in this space, you picked a field that uh, is pretty hot. So as, as you think back and look at the convergence of OT and IT, what are some of the top level things that people are thinking about, but what are some of the top level things that they're just missing? Well, when you speak about OT, typically you refer to critical infrastructure and the technology that operates things, so it's cyber physical systems, right? And when you think of IT, you think about computer and you think about the web, and you're like, okay, when the two things meet, and then you put in the recipe, you put something like an IoT device, like uh, an IP camera, so a sensor for the number of people in a room. Now, these all things are coming together. And they're coming together because they come with a lot of interesting use cases. You can have all the data and information to configure, for instance, your building to be as smart as possible and to have... You need smart wheels on that course. cart, my goodness. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a clear picture of how much energy you consume and then you can basically have the energy that is cheaper because it just arrives in the moment that you need it. Now, all of these things are IT and OT convergence. Uh, and all of these things make our cities and our world smarter today. Right, now one of the interesting things I saw in uh, talk getting ready for this is, is you talked about there's always been a lot of OT systems. They've been around for a while, yeah. but they've always been siloed. You know, they haven't been connected to other OT systems, much less being connected to the IT systems. Yeah. So they weren't architected for that from the first uh, point of view. So how does that get implemented? Are they re-architecting them? Are you guys overlaying you know, a different kind of control plane? How do you take these siloed applications around, say, the, the uh, elevator operation and then integrate it in with all these other things? So what happens is that those systems are legacy system, that's why they are like 60% of the modern building, of the buildings today, they have, they are controlled and managed by systems that are 20 years old. So what does it mean? That you make an investment and you don't want to change that investment. You are not going to renew all the backbones of your buildings or of all your manufacturing and operation factories. So what do you do? On top of this legacy system that have been developed without security in mind, you put the IT systems to monitor, to control, to have remote access and remote control. And this is where like things can go wrong because if this is not done properly and by having in mind, for instance, the threat landscape, that's where you will have the controller for your HVAC exposed to the internet and can pull down all the air conditioning in a hospital, for instance. And that's where WannaCry can come and hit and put down tons and tons of hospitals. Right, it's pretty interesting, you know, I think it's a pretty common concept and security for people that you should only have access you know, to the information you need around a particular yeah. project or a particular data set. But you talked about in some of your other, other talks that I saw about a lot of these devices come out of the box with all kinds of capabilities, right? Because they're built for kind of the nth degree, the maximum use, but there may be a whole bunch of stuff that that's turned on out of the box that you probably need to turn off. Yeah, that's actually super interesting. If you look at the IP cameras, now IP cameras, they should do one thing, record stuff that they see on, on the screen. But actually they come with a bunch of protocols indeed, like uh, FTP, Samba protocols, SSDP, that announce the camera on the network and reveal a lot of information about those cameras on the network that if are picked by an attacker or by someone with not good intentions, might actually be leveraged to turn the camera against the owner of the camera right, itself. Right and do weird things that the camera should not. And that's really part of what the Forescout solution is, is making sure that the, the devices are profiled and acting in the way that they're supposed to act and not doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. Yeah, Forescout gives is a leader in device visibility. So what we do is like we enter into a network and we give full visibility of all the IP devices that are there and that's most of the times is a wow effect. Like right. the asset owner has no ideas that they had a camera that was directly connected to the internet 
or they have a thermostat that communicates with the servers. So all of these things, we bring basically light on, uh, on, the, on the dark sides right. of the network. <laughs> so I'm so excited to talk to you, because I think the smart cities and smart buildings is such an interesting concept. They're going to be so important as we get denser populations and smaller areas that are connected to transportation. I wonder if you could share some examples that you see out in the field where the ROI on putting these things in, the good part, is way higher than maybe people expect it because you're combining a, you know, one plus one equals three kind of an opportunity. Right, so actually one example of, uh, uh, of a very useful and smart use cases is happening in Amsterdam right now. Uh, the Beimer Arena uh, is basically all the walls are made of solar panel, which means it gets the energy and is able to basically self-sustain the arena. The arena is one of the biggest stadium in, okay. uh, in the Netherlands. Now, the Ajax plays there probably? Exactly. All right. Now, <laughs> what they do, if they have collected more energy than they are able to consume, they provide that same energy to the neighbors, which means that you have basically a small ecosystem that thanks to the collection of data, knowing what neighbor needs how much light and energy in a certain time, you can actually even improve self-sustainability and going green initiatives. I love the innovation that comes out, out of the Netherlands. We interviewed a company a long time ago and they were basically doing segmented data centers where you would have a piece of the data center in your house and they were selling it as free heating. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. is it free heating or is it distributed data center? But I mean, the creativity is, t is, uh, yeah. is terrific. So as you look forward, you know, what are you excited about in 2019? What are some of your top initiatives that you're, uh, that you're working on? So we are working on a lot about IT and OT convergence and especially on the IoT part. So we are looking at all those tiny devices that you will not expect to be on your network and what they can do and how these old systems that have been conceived to be standalone are now starting to communicate and what kind of threats this communication can bring and what we can do to actually defend our customer from, from the threats can, can be arised. Going to be a good year, we're excited to, uh, to watch the developments unfold. Yeah, thanks. All, all right, Lisa, thanks for taking a few minutes of your day. I know you said you had early meetings, you're calling Europe, calling all over the world, so uh, thanks for taking a few. Thank you for having me. All right, she's Elise, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE, we're at RSA Conference. RSA sees the hashtag in the Forescout booth. I'm Jeff Frick, thanks for watching. Thank you.